What's going on, Bird Game? Philly Carnage here, back. Episode 3 of the Cincinnati Bengals Rebuild. So, right before we get into this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button with the little bell icon on. That way, every time I post new content, you're one of the first to know. But, as we get right, right into this, you know, we're sitting here, we're picking at pick number 8. So, it's going to be very, very interesting to see where we go. Because, you know, we do need some help. You know, definitely on the defense side of the ball. Uh, let me get right back to the all positions. Defense side of the ball, we could use a cornerback. And Tony Grimes right there could be the guy. You know, first in the 40, first in the three cone, and first in the 20-yard shuttle. But... If I remember correctly, we did throw in Akeem Akawan, early first rounder as well, for right guard that we could look at bringing in uh, because I, I'm pretty sure he's not going to be there in the second round. So with that being said, we're just going to do it. We're going to jump. We're going to take a right guard, and we get him. 77 overall, number four in true talent. Hayden Dev out of NC State. You know, looks pretty damn good. So we reached a bit in the second round by going and just grabbing the right end. But, you know, 71 overall. Hayden Dev out of Auburn. You know, pretty happy with it. You know, yes, it was a reach, but it's going to add depth to our defensive line. Uh, definitely going to be looking, possibly bringing in a running back or, you know, corner here in round three and four, depending on what we actually have going on and, you know, in position of play for us. So with that, we'll take a look here. Running backs, you know, we could go Mashard Lloyd, Mashawn Lloyd, third rounder power back out of South Carolina or you know, we could look at one of these guys as Demarcus Bowman out of Florida or Demir Gibbs out of Georgia Tech. You know, early second round talent, uh, mid second, and then late third. So, you know, let's just go, let's grab Jameer Gibbs. You know, just add a little more depth there. Uh, I believe we only have Joe Mixon on the roster as of right now. But 73 overall, 88 speed, 93 excel, 77 break tackle. You know, that 90 change of direction is going to be absolutely huge for us whenever it comes to making cuts. So taking a look here at the draft board, Akeem Ekwon, uh Zacharias Walker, Jameer Gribbs. Then we went Marcus Banks. You know, not the greatest, 68 overall, 91 speed, 92 excel. So hopefully that's going to play, you know, well for the team. Went with a backup quarterback at a Boise State, Hank Backschmier. You know, only a 60 overall, speed not the greatest. Uh, what was his throw power? Throw power in 86, so not bad. Definitely some room for improvement. Um, and we'll get back over here, but you know, we went back up tight end. Steve Sherman, 58 overall, is what it is. But Justin Strike, 69 overall, hit in depth. Rookie out of Oregon. He was first in every single aspect of the combine for kickers. And then rounded out Jordan Whittington. You know, he was a deep threat. You know, had a very, very solid combine. He's big. He's, you know, 6'1", out of Texas. You know, 90 speed. Not where we want. You know, we always want that, you know, a little higher 90s. But development prospect. So here we are getting ready to kick off week one. And... You know, we're currently in 86 overall, 88 offense, 84 defense. There is one thing that I wanted to do because it's still not sitting right with me after, you know, last year. So that is going to be 
We're putting Tyler Boyd up on the trade block. You can't recover an onside kick that is kicked directly at you. Come on, guy. It, it's unacceptable, and we can't be playing like that. So we got Pittsburgh and then Baltimore here week one and two. We suffer our first loss of the year. Uh, we do have some trade offers already. Tyler Boyd, 28 years old. And, I mean, looking at it, nobody really wants to give us anything for him, even though he is a superstar receiver. So, with that, we might go mess around. You know, Baltimore, New York, and Jacksonville, we might be able to go and swindle our way in there to, you know, maybe improve on the draft capital that we'll get for year four. So, I mean, with that, like I said, we were going to go try to swindle our way into something, and we got the first-round pick from Jacksonville for Tyler Boyd. So we suffered our second loss of the year, 30-24 to to Baltimore, as we got the Miami Dolphins here, who are currently sitting 2-0, and and we get a victory. Finally, off that losing streak to start out, and Joe Burrow comes out, 389, five touchdowns, to one interception. So would have been nice not to have that pick, but there is a chance that we could be coming into week five with a X factor, you know, opportunity. So here in week four, might as well take a look at contracts. We know the, the big man, you know, Joe Burrow. Let's give it to him. Everything aside from salary is great. So we'll come back. We'll definitely lock him up. And, you know, now we can just come down here and kind of take a look at everybody else. Um, you know, Gaither has been pretty solid for us, along with Tyus Bowser. You know, Darius Phillips, Logan Wilson, Sam Hubbard as well, DJ Reader, T. Higgins, Desmond King. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of money that we got to spend, which is why we did not go too big in free agency last season. So here in week five, I noticed we got a good bit of coach XP that we should we should spend. You know, get it off of us. It does nothing for us just sitting there. So, you know, kind of just giving a rundown of how I do it. I always come over here to player progression. You know, the first thing that I always do, increase player weekly XP. You know, just because across the board, across the team, everybody gets upgraded. You know, then offensive line, defensive line, always do them. Then, you know, I'm more of a defensive guy myself as far as, you know, watching the guys progress and develop. So I always go D-line, hits your entire D-line. Linebacker hits all the D-line. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, linebacker hits all the linebackers. And DBs hit all your cornerbacks and your safeties as well. So with that, now we still have 4,500 experience points left. So, you know, we know Joe Burrow's developing. Nicely has that superstar. Uh, our receivers have all the superstars as well, so they're still developing at a faster pace than normal. Joe Mixon as well. So you know, let, let's spend it. Uh, you know, we want Joe Burrow to get closer to that ninety-nine overall as quick as possible. And you know, with that being said, like I said about week three, look at this. Joe Burrow has the opportunity to go up to a superstar X Factor here. Needs 300 in total, 350 total yards, whether it's passing and receiving. Four touchdowns, no interceptions. And we need the victory against the Seattle Seahawks. So here we are. We're starting off on defense. Let's see if Madden. You know, we'll actually focus on having, you know, uh, Russ Wilson decide to take off and run because, you know, we know recently in a lot of the Maddens that scrambling quarterbacks don't typically scramble. But with that being said, I mean, we, uh, we've we noticed in past Maddens that they actually did. Like Vic, back in 04, I think it was. No, it would have been 04. 02, 01, I, I don't know. But they actually used a scrambling quarterback the way they should have been used, to where they would actually run the ball. And you know now it's just more of a, you know, 
comfort thing, I guess, where they don't like getting outside of the pocket. But we forced Seattle to punt the ball back to us here on their first possession. Go. Go, Cup. Go, Cup. Let's go. Good pickup. Joe Burrow, seven, 45 yards so far, two passes. And he also has... Um, what was it? 16 on the ground? So there's a chance that we could hit uh, Nagata here on the bubble screen. We do. Can we get around the corner? Uh, we are able to pick up a little bit. Gain of three. Joe Burrow, three for three, 48 yards so far in the ball game. as, you know, we definitely need to find a way to get in for a touchdown. You know, Seattle's defense, it's scary looking at it whenever you got, you know, Bobby Wagner, uh, not really sure who else. <laughs> see. A.J. Boye, Shaq Griffin, Jamal Adams, Bobby Wagner, and K.J. Wright all as, you know, sitting there with abilities. As we're just going to dump it down here. We got Joe Mixon able to get down, you know, third and one. So let's just, let's try. 0-1 trap. And we, all right, so we know we got threat. Uh, come on, come on, Joe. And yeah, we had threat detector, so we knew that linebacker coming down in was not actually on a blitz. It was only on the right side. So with that, we're able to run it. We're able to run it successfully to go ahead and pick up the first down as we're going to send Jalen Waddle on a slant with T. Higgins coming across. Uh, roll right, roll right. Can we just get in? Can we get in? And we do. Joe Burrow, send it to the crowd, big man. Getting the Cincinnati leap. Yes, I know. It's normally the Lambo, but we're in Cincinnati. Let's go. 7 nothing. extra point pending. Higgins. Higgins. There we go. Down, ah, and we're in. And we're in. Let's go. I thought he was down at the 1. But hey. That's our second touchdown for Joe Burrow. We need two more with still one whole half of football left to go. What? What? <laughs> well, all right. So I was not expecting that. I was just gonna go and you know get the let the punt go, and then you know come back in when we get back on offense. But I mean, you saw it. They decided, hey, we're gonna run a fake punt, which was definitely different. Ah, come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. All right, good fight, Joe. Good fight, Joe. As down here, second and two, Joe Burrow, eight for ten. As we got to try to go and get in to the end zone here. And if we do, that's absolutely fantastic. That cuts us down to one more touchdown for Joe that we need to get. And, I mean, we'll just... Uh, that, what the hell kind of low ball was that, Joe? Come on. As we're just going to go 0-1 trap again, as, you know, all we see, we got... You know, the little exclamation point against the right outside linebackers. So we should be able to, as long as we get a good push, we picked it up. Let's go. Come on. Hurry up. It's hurry up time. We're still got a blitz there. Still should have Joe mix it out of the backfield. And we do. Oh, uh, ooh. Ooh, and that was a fourth and inches. That could have been bad. I thought we picked up the first down. But I mean, as we both, as we all saw, not both. Is, I mean, there are more than just one of you guys that watch me, surprisingly. But we're able to go ahead and we're able to pick up the first down there as we're just going to dump it down in below the cup. Come on, cup. Come on, cup. Down here to the 14-yard line. Red 
Joe's rolling out. Joe's rolling out. Can he get out of bounds? He does. Down to the 10. 25 yards on the ground so far in the ball game. As you know, we just need to find something to that way we can go and push this in here and get another touchdown with 23 seconds left to go. We're going to send on a little uh, tight end delay fade to where he'll, you know, he'll block. He'll block. And we just dump it off here to Joe. Damn it, Joe. Damn it, Joe. Joe to Joe is a pretty solid connection so far. But we need points. A halfback angle. And unfortunately, they're not in a cover two. So we might have Joe Nixon out of the backfield, though. We don't. But can we get the low throw? We do. We got the low throw. Who is that? Is that Nagata? That is now I got it. Let's go. And, I mean, computer's telling me, hey, we just got a com uh, a new achievement unlocked for a touchdown using low throw. See if we can just get one of those, you know, gimme interceptions here. As he's just going to throw it deep. And we might. Oh. <laughs> I really undercut that. But out of bounds. Bringing it into the second half. What? What the? <laughs> I had him. Instead of going and throwing the ball when I hit the button. He pump fakes. And throws it right to Bobby Wagner. So there goes the X Factor opportunity for Joe Burrow. So the Seahawks are down here within the red zone as we're trying to make something happen, try to get a stop, hold them to three. Do something, as really this game does not matter anymore other than coming away with the victory. Since, you know, they decide, hey, we're not going to let you hit the button. We're just going to pump fake, which then allows you to go ahead and get hit and throw the interception to get away, get rid of your, you know, dev trait opportunity as we're just going to take Bowser here and we're going to drop back in coverage just in case there's somebody coming on the outside. And we get the sack. Logan Wilson coming in there and putting Russ Wilson on his ass. Poor Joe Burrow. So we got frustrated T. Higgins as we got the two and three. Los Angeles Rams, we get a 20 to 10 victory. We got the Los Angeles Chargers, 28 to 10 loss. We did have a weekly player, Logan Wilson, 10 tackles, one uh, interception, and a forced fumble. So, I mean, kind of is what it is as we're going through this. We got the one and six Browns. So, Browns are definitely, you know, on the downs downswing of everything. And we get a 38 to 14 victory there as we got the Houston Texans in week nine. You know, hopefully we can somehow come away and get a victory there. All right. For some reason, my game is being extremely slow right now, especially whenever it comes to changing, you know, screens as we get a 31 to 10 victory. We can come in here, check some upgrades. I got to. You know, upgrading there nicely. Jesse Bates about to hit a 96 overall. Joe Burrow about to be a 90. Come on. Upgrade all. There we go. Now, I, I'm not sure why this is taking so long for everything. Because it is being extremely, extremely slow. And it is frustrating. So we got a 20 to... 22-17 victory against the San Francisco 49ers. 
as you know i kind of went away i restarted the entire console as it was irritating me so yeah it seems to be working a little better right now um even though my cpu is running through the roof right now um uh, i guess it, this is what i get for trying to upload to facebook as well which that link is down in the description if you ever want to check that out as we lost to the Colts 17 to 14 and we have an opportunity for a breakout scenario akeem davis gaither can finally try to get off of that normal dev trait as we got the four and six arizona cardinals coming to town as here we go now we sit and wait once again so we got the victory 35 to 7 we did not get the dev trait for akeem davis gaither but you know we're currently sitting seven and four and you know we got a pretty decent stretch here between you know going up against the baltimore ravens the pittsburgh steelers tyler boyd and the jacksonville jaguars and then you know we got Cleveland Browns, who I'm not sure how they're still sitting. I know initially they were one in a million, and then finish out the year with Tennessee. So we suffered a 28 to 17 loss to the Baltimore Ravens, which dropped us to seven and five. Pittsburgh's eight and four. If we can come away and get a victory here, that'd be very beneficial for the team. As we do, we get a 34 to 23 victory. We got some weekly awards here to take a look at. As you know, coaching XP is back up there where we can go ahead and take a look at you know upgrading receiver, add the cup there a little bit, as we're currently sitting just a blue screen, waiting on this thing to load as Joe Burrow gets five touchdown passes, two sacks, and he carried the ball for three times for no yardage. So we get a 31 to 28 victory over Jacksonville as we got the six and eight Cleveland Browns here and we get another victory and we got the rest or start message. So that means we are guaranteed a playoff spot. So taking a look currently at the playoff picture, we are the number two seed in the AFC over. The only one above us is the Indianapolis Colts who did beat us earlier in the season. So, I'm not sure what their overall record is, but there is that chance that if we win here against the Tennessee Titans, we could somehow come away with a victory, and we do. And we can come away with a victory. We can come away with the number one seed, as the GM wants to congratulate us on punching our ticket to the playoffs as we get plus 20 morale. Helps boost the team all over the place. As we did, we got the number one seed. Cincinnati is back on top. The Colts fall. Jacksonville wins. And since we have that tiebreaker over Jacksonville, that bumped us right up there to the number one seed in the AFC. Weekly awards, we got Joe Burrow out there doing his thing again. 328 for passing touchdowns. As we can go ahead, we can just... You know, upgrade everybody. Baylor Cup's coming along nicely. Our offensive line is a very solid as you know, currently we're an 88 overall, 92 offense, 85 defense. And I mean, just kind of taking a look here as you know the season progressed, everybody except for Davis is, you know, a silver or superstar. Uh still waiting to find out about our kicker. But I mean Fantastic. As Walker came in as a star dev, which what I want to do, I want to bump him up to D2. You know, get everything that we can in there to, you know, help uh, develop these guys even more as we're also going to move Lamin up. Why didn't I do that before? Because uh, I, I like Gaither. Gaither has been solid. For this team as we're going to figure out who we got and we got Pittsburgh for the third time this season we're going to be taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers as we're going to try to come away victorious here as right now we'll 
Oops. Oops. So, <laughs> yeah. As you see, I just screwed up. I wanted to go and, you know, play the game, at least watch the moments, and I simmed it. So, we lose to the number 7 seed, 35-25, as you got the Chargers and the Steelers facing off in the AFC Championship, the Giants and the Bears there in the NFC. So, we did have a weekly award, Joe Burrow. And Logan Wilson coming out on top of the AFC, yet we still fell short. As we can just go through, hit the upgrades, and you know, sim up here to the Pro Bowl, see what we have going for us as the Steelers lost. That's great. Giants, Chargers, Super Bowl 58. As taking a look here at the Pro Bowl roster, we got Joe Burrow as your number one quarterback. And just kind of going down through, seeing what we got. T. Higgins there, wide receiver six, cup tight end two. Uh, our center is in there. So, I mean, things are starting to look up. Remember last year we had no representatives. That is, I mean, that's all we have. So, um, somebody explain this to me, please. How do you have an opportunity for a dev trait? In the Pro Bowl. So season recap. We finished 11-5. and five, Bounced in the first round. We were the 6th overall offense. And the 1st overall defense. Statistically. Joe Burrow. Much better year than last year. 4,100 yards. 35 touchdowns. 6 interception. Rushing wise. Joe Mixon. Almost 1,206. Gibbs coming in there, putting 450 and 5. Joe Burrow even adding three touchdowns on the ground receiving-wise. We got T. Higgins up there, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Jalen Waddle, 9, 5, 5, 8. And the Cup bringing in 850 and 10. Nagata didn't really see the ball much, but, you know, 6 and 2 is respectable. Defensively, Logan Wilson is a tackle machine. 124, 9 TFLs, three and a half sacks, and two picks. Sack-wise, Trey Hendrickson led the way with 7.5. Zacharias Walker with 5. As we got interception-wise, you got Logan Wilson, Darius Phillips, Von Bell, Israel Mukamu with 2. And then just rounding out the rest with 1. Denzel Ward still not that free agent signing that we thought we were going to get. Yearly awards, you got Lamar Jackson as your MVP. Joe Burrow coming in there at number four. AFC Lamar, Joe Burrow runner-up. Defensive player, you got Jerome Baker. Logan Wilson coming in there at number three. Offensive rookie goes to Jaden Daniels. Uh, uh, Jameer Gibbs coming in there at four. Defensive rookie, Noah Sewell. And Zacharias, Zacharias, something... Forget how I've been saying it, but coming in there at number three, best quarterback goes to Lamar, running back Josh Jacobs, receiver Marquise Brown, uh, Quentin Nelson, Miles Garrett, Darius Leonard, Mike Hilton. So, I mean, didn't get any individual awards per se, but I mean, number one seated in the AFC, we get bounced, it was crap as. The Chargers get their first Super Bowl victory. 38-24 over the New York Giants as Lamar Jackson was your MVP. Joe Judge, your coach of the year. Sam Howell, Bobby Wagner, Bryce Young, and Brian Breesey. You know, just round out the rest of the award. So, free agency week, we're going to go big. We're going to go for the top free agent and we'll see if we can get him because if we can get never mind Deion Jones decides well, he's not going to take our offer 96 overall would have been fantastic addition to the team but that's going to do it for me for this episode here you know it, it was a tough one missed on that X Factor ability for Joe Burrow we 
ended up getting the number one seed. I screwed up. I sinned it instead of watching the moments. So, I mean, kind of is what it is. But as you see on the screen, there are the socials, the Instagram, the Twitch, the Facebook. Make sure to go drop a you know, follow on each and every one of those. All the links are down below in the description. And don't forget to hey, yo, hit that sub button with the little bell icon on. You know, everything. Everything helps. And don't forget, if you haven't yet, hit that like button. You know, help me, you know, continue to produce some great content by, you know, getting my name out there a little more. But until next time, Billy's out.